you're walking along a long dusty road when you see way off in the distance what looks like just a, a little puff of smoke as you continue on the road the puff gets bigger larger and larger until you realize it's a group of people walking on the road toward you you get a little nervous at first not quite sure who they are but they don't seem to look like they're ready to cause any harm they get closer and closer and you can start to hear them <laughs> and you hear their songs you hear them singing then all of a sudden you're in their midst they're upon you and you are in the middle of their crowd and you see the the look on their faces they're smiling every single one of them as they sing their songs you notice pretty quickly that it's a a group of pilgrims headed up to Jerusalem headed for the feast headed to to worship their God you see old men realizing this might be their last pilgrimage you see young children up on the shoulders of mom and dad because they got kind of tired of walking you see groups of younger teenagers clumped together as they often do walking all together celebrating singing out loud moving together with the hope and the power of their Lord well this is very likely uh, what happened many times throughout uh, the days of worship in the temple in Jerusalem uh, we actually get uh, proof of these uh, realities in our scriptures we can read in the Psalms uh, what's sometimes called the book of ascents uh, meaning uh, the people who were ascending up on the way to Jerusalem and in the, the book of Psalms which is uh, of course our song book in the scripture these are the songs that they sang as they walked toward the temple as they walked toward the the feast or the festival they would sing these songs they would uh, have joy on their faces as they moved toward what was going to be a, a meaningful experience of community together as they gathered with other pilgrims along the way this book of ascents or the Psalms of ascents uh, begin in Psalm 120 uh, continue through Psalm 134 uh, we read a lot of the, the 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 lines or the passages that are maybe some of our most favorite some of the ones that are very familiar to us from Psalms from these books Psalm 121 says I lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come Psalm 122 we've already heard this morning I was glad when they said to me let us go to the house of the Lord Psalm 124, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been on the Lord who was on our side. Psalm 125, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. And then these words uh, from Psalm 130, out of the depths I cry to you, my Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Uh, wait a minute, what? That doesn't sound like a, a song of celebration. That doesn't sound like a, a song of joy. Well, where did this one get it stuck in the middle of this? Maybe it's kind of out of place. Out of the depths I cry to you. Lord, hear my voice. <laughs> I, uh, I went looking uh, this week for a, uh, a sad song from our, our culture, a familiar song, uh, in order to compare it to Psalm 130. In the middle of all these happy songs, here's this kind of sad, depressing song. Uh, and in my search, I found 50. Uh, there's a, a website that uh, has uh, the top 50 saddest songs. The first one is a familiar one, right? Tears in Heaven. Oh, what a tearjerker, right? It's about uh, uh, Eric Clapton's son who died. Oh, every time we sing that, it's just kind of uh, very emotional. Uh, number two, Last Kiss. This is one back from the 50s about the, uh, uh, the, the teenage couple that was in a car accident and they, you know, crawled toward each other and it's been redone several times over and over again including Pearl Jam in the last few years. Uh, just a very sad, very uh, kind of depressing song. Uh, oh, my goodness, When She Loved Me uh, from Toy Story 2. Uh, for those of you who have seen that, if you, if you didn't cry during that uh, song, then you really don't have a heart. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, 
uh, Sadako folding cranes. This is a one about Hiroshima, about a, a young girl who actually survived uh, the blast at Hiroshima only to uh, contract cancer uh, later and died from that. So very, very depressing song, very difficult song. Um, oh, Cats in the Cradle, everybody know that song? Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a tough one, especially, you know, reading and hearing those lyrics and uh, uh, very uh, poignant uh, in terms of family. Oh, country music. Oh, how many good country songs are just tear triggers. <laughs> he Stopped Loving Her Today by George Jones. Oh, my goodness. Everybody knows that one. And there's another country one. Yeah, I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry was number two. Uh, Hank Williams Sr. And then uh, Casimir Pulaski Day uh, by Sufjan Stevens. This one may not be as familiar, uh, but it tells the story of a, a, young, uh, a young man and uh, his, uh, his love, his teenage love, who uh, uh, contracted leukemia and died, right? I mean, these are, these are hard songs. These are depressing songs. Uh, I can't imagine the experience to go through and pick out 50 of them, uh, what that would have been like. And, and that's kind of what it feels like, right? It kind of feels like that when we're flipping through all of these uh, uh, excited, uh, happy, celebratory psalms in the, the book of Ascents. And then we get to Psalm 130. It feels like one of these. Uh, it feels like, uh, you know, you, you show up to a, a birthday party, a surprise party, and instead of singing happy birthday, you know, they sing Cats in the Cradle. <laughs> right? It's... It's, it's not what we're expecting. It's not what we're looking for. Uh, why, is, why is this sad song in the middle of all these joyous ones, in the middle of the celebration that is uh, the songs of sense? Well, I think it's there for a reason. I think it's there because there's a, a reality in our lives in which as we uh, move into a time of worship, as they were doing uh, in the pilgrimage toward uh, the feast days, um, we bring all that we are. And the Psalms do that so much better than many other parts of Scripture because they, they speak of the highest highs and the lowest lows. And so they name the reality that is uh, out of the depths. I cry to you. And we get it. We know it. Can you imagine the experience of the pilgrims walking down and they're singing the happy songs and they're excited and then they get to this one in the order. But yet there's a, an honesty about it, a truth about it. We know. We know about the depths. It doesn't take long to live to know that there are things in our lives that are hard, make it difficult. I think about when I was uh, uh, reading this uh, uh, psalm over the course of the last several um, days, the, the thing that got, came back to me often and often again was the, the grief that is present in so many of our lives. Uh, I remember uh, as I was reading this, a time in which um, the, the, all three of my remaining grandparents passed away. Uh, it was about only about 18 months, two years, uh, very quickly, kind of in su- succession. And uh, when it happened, it felt like there was uh, in my life this significant grief, not just because I, I, I missed uh, Grandma, I missed Mamma, I missed Granddaddy, but uh, I missed kind of the, the passing of a generation. Uh, I missed the, uh, uh, all that connects uh, me to that. I, I spent a lot of time thinking about uh, the, the joy that we would have together and the celebration that we would have together when we go to, down to Mamma and Granddaddy's house. We would uh, get together with all the cousins and we'd uh, all uh, eat our uh, dinner uh, so that we could uh, um, um, do what we needed to do, the most important thing we needed to do, go to Dairy Queen. <laughs> that was, that's what it was really about. Uh, if you grew up in the, the Midwest back 30, 40 years ago, you understand Dairy Queen was it. That was the only place you could go. And so we'd all pile in the back of uh, Granddaddy's truck and uh, we'd drive over to uh, Dairy Queen. Mamaw would yell at us through the window the whole time, sit down, stop moving around, don't, don't get up, you're going to fall out. Uh, and then we'd go and we'd get our Dilly Bar and we'd get our uh, Nerds Blizzard or our, uh, Peanut Buster Parfait. And we'd sit in the big, the, the huge uh, booth in the corner with the, the circle table. And we'd all shiver as we ate our ice cream. Uh, and I realized that was gone, that that uh, experience of childhood, that experience of um, being together with family. And I, I understood that there, there was this complicated grief, all of this together. It was not just the people, uh, but it was also uh, the house and the small town and those memories and the cousins that I knew probably wouldn't get together nearly as often 
if at all. Um, and that's how grief happens, doesn't it? Uh, out of the depths, says the psalmist. The pain that we struggle with. And it doesn't just go away. It's not a, a month-long thing or even a year-long thing. It's a continual process. Uh, and remember that the grief is not just losing a person, but grief is, uh, it takes place whenever we lose anything that we love, any person that we love. Um, and so I'm struck uh, here in this uh, moment about the ways that we as a congregation uh, grieve on this day. How many of us have lost something over the course of the last several days and months and uh, even the last several months into the last year. Uh, I've heard stories about so many folks who have lost siblings, uh, who have lost uh, grandparents, who have lost parents, uh, who have lost beloved pets, part of the family, uh, who have lost jobs, who have lost marriages. Again and again, I hear of the grief that we as a church have gone through. And when people move away, right? Last week, we grieved Joanne Wilson as she moved away. The week before, uh, John and Lindsay Robinson uh, and the Lambies. When they move away, we grieve their loss. And uh, so I mentioned last week uh, in staff meeting about how that, that felt very real to us in this moment as a congregation. We felt uh, like there was a out of the depths moment happening. And so I went back and I actually looked at uh, the, uh, the numbers and to, and to see the names of folks who have passed away in the last 12 months. Now, I know it's not All Saints Day, but listen to a, a list of names as it becomes more real, the grief that we experience as a congregation. These are folks within the last 12 months from our congregation who have died. Ruth Ramsire, Beth Mathis, Kirk Hines, Wanda Chauvin, George Templeton, Jack Leipzig, Ashton Thompson, Hazel Nitcher, David Given, Lee Wright, Clark Havener, and Marge King. It's one a month. Names that are meaningful and important to us. People who we as a congregation have known sometimes for a generation. And it hurts. We feel like the psalmists. Out of the depths, I cry to you. <laughs> I just want somebody to hear me, they say. And how often in our grief do we have that experience? We just want someone to hear us, to know us, to understand our grief. Well, the psalmist continues. <laughs> somebody does hear the psalmist says, somebody does listen to us. Listen to these words as the psalm continues. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. Throughout the psalm, there's a, a word of hope that kind of injects throughout all of it. It, it says again and again that there, there is a, a God who hears us. There is a someone with a capital S who hears our grief, who knows our grief, who understands it. And here it uh, uh, kind of gives us a, a very logical understanding of who this God is. Uh, we hear different uh, words kind of throughout the, uh, the, the psalm. Uh, here we hear about forgiveness, understanding that Indeed, uh, the, the world of fallenness, the world of brokenness that surrounds us is why we experience this grief, why we experience this pain. But yet there's a, a God who forgives. Uh, in a few verses, we, we read about uh, redemption and the power of redemption. This is not simply redemption in terms of uh, saving us so that we could go to heaven. That's part of it. But it's also redemption of our hearts and our souls and our minds in this world, in this life. Uh, in another verse, it talks about, uh, uses the, the Hebrew word hesed, which is this great, powerful word, uh, sometimes translated as, as loving kindness, sometimes translated as everlasting love, sometimes simply grace. This is what God does in the midst of our depths. 
God is here. It's kind of like the, the psalmist uh, uh, steps up to the podium and lectures us, uh, kind of the seminary professor who's talking to us about the problem of pain or why when good things happen or bad things happen to, to good people, uh, kind of the, the spirit of what we call theodicy, uh, kind of this question of when all this pain is in our lives, what do we do with it, right? And so these are very logical. These are very uh, rational arguments to say, but look, there is a God there is a God who doesn't leave us alone, who is with us in the waters, a God who walks beside us as we go. And our, our brains tell us that, yes, we know that, we understand that, we, we, we get it, but sometimes it's the experience, the pain that overwhelms us. Even though our brains tell us there is a God, it's our hearts that still are broken. And so the psalmist continues, meaning to move not only our brains, but our hearts as well. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Oh, what powerful emotive words. Understanding indeed. It's not just knowing God, but understanding, experiencing, loving God. Uh, it's a, a powerful way uh, that we can't quite understand uh, in the English, but in the Hebrew, this song uh, would have uh, uh, kind of repeated uh, in that as they sang that song, it would have felt like they were waiting, 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 waiting on the Lord. There was a moment of the refrain in which even the way that they sang it as they walked down the dusty road reminded them to wait, to wait to wait for the experience of their head and the experience of their heart to match up. And then there's this, this beautiful scene, is that the, uh, the, the watchman on the tower, uh, the, the, the way that the passage describes this is uh, somebody who's uh, protecting, who's watching out uh, over perhaps a city or perhaps a, a palace or a fort, something, so that uh, they watch the hills around them for the enemy to come. Of course, the enemy would more likely come uh, at night in the dark under the, the cover of darkness. And so here was the watchman waiting for that to take place. Their job was to keep their eyes peeled all night long, to look, to watch, to see if indeed uh, the enemy was coming. And so in their watching, they hoped for the dawn to come. They hoped for a moment of light to come up over the hills to say, we're safe this night. We're okay for now. And as the, the stars blinked away, one and two and ten and fifty at a time, then came the dawn. Then came the light. And the psalmist tells us that's what it's like as we wait for the Lord. Yes, we still know the depths, but we wait. We wait for that day. We wait for that dawn. And that's the experience that I think that we have, as believers, understanding that, yes, even in the midst of our pain, even in the midst of our agony, in the midst of our depths, we can still wait. We can still see that there is a dawn coming. After my grandparents passed away, um, there was this uh, uh, understanding, this reality of uh, uh, being awakened, kind of uh, understanding the dawn, it happened soon after my, uh, my mamaw, who was the, the last to pass, died. And we all stayed in town after the funeral. Uh, most of us stayed there in the, the house. And uh, as we did that, somebody had the suggestion, why don't we go to Dairy Queen? And so we all climbed in the cars. Of course, we wouldn't fit in the back of the uh, pickup truck anymore. And we all drove to Dairy Queen and we all sat around. We wouldn't fit in the big booth in the corner anymore either, but as we scattered throughout the restaurant, I looked around and I saw that, yes, we would still be family. We would still be together. There would still be a word of hope in the midst of us. And so we understand that. We see that, but there, there comes a point where we can experience it, where there is a, a new dawning in our life. There's a, a quote from Paul Tillich in the hymnal or in the bulletin in front of you that I think speaks to this. He says, Grace strikes us 
when we were in great pain and restlessness. It strikes us when we walk through the dark valley of a meaningless and empty life. It strikes us when our disgust for our own being, our indifference, our weakness, our hostility, our lack of direction and composure have become intolerable to us. It strikes us when year after year the longed for protection of life does not appear, when the old compulsions reign within us as if they have for decades, when despair destroys all joy and courage. Sometimes at that moment, a wave of light breaks into our darkness. And it's as though a voice were saying, you are accepted. A word of hope in the midst of the depths. That's the final word that the psalmist leaves with us. They say, O Israel, hope in the Lord. With the Lord there is steadfast love. With him there is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. There is hope. You know, um, sometimes on my runs, as I go out and uh, run around uh, Lawrence, I, uh, I try to leave early, early, early in the morning, especially with this heat. Uh, and so I try to get out, uh, sometimes before dawn, as uh, the light starts to, to get lighter and lighter throughout the day. And usually what I do is I, I try to plan so that uh, when I uh, get to the point where the sun rises up over the horizon, I'm in some place incredible, Right? Uh, up here on uh, uh, north of uh, Princeton there, they used to call Paramiski Hill, where you can like see the whole town spread out to the east. Uh, or down south uh, on uh, Clinton Lake, uh, there at Sanders Mound, where you could see the, the dawn coming up over the, the dam and over the lake. Or on uh, top of a uh, here on top of the, uh, the hill uh, at KU, and you could see dawn kind of bursting forth over the top of the campus or at the Campanile where it comes and it shines forth. And I, and I, I vision that and I plan that and it almost never happens. <laughs> right? I mean, I've always timed it wrong and so I'm either before where I need to be or I'm after where I need to be or there's hills that I didn't take into account and so the sun doesn't rise for a few more minutes. And more often than not, I find myself on some boring back gravel road when the sun comes up, nothing exciting, nothing amazing, nothing powerful, and I just kind of, uh, all of a sudden, oh, oh, well, there it is. <laughs> but I've seen some of the most beautiful sunrises from those gravel roads. Some of the most unexpected and powerful moments of God's beauty as I run in some nondescript place. Isn't that the way grace works? It doesn't happen the way we plan it. And it's going to be perfect and it's going to be awesome and it's going to be... No, it, it happens. Sometimes it happens without our knowing it. Sometimes it happens even if we don't predict it. The sunrise of grace comes to our hearts. That's what I want you to hear today. That even if you feel like you're in the midst of the depths, God will show you the sunrise. God will give us grace. That even in the depths of your pain and in your grief and, and the things that have left you in this world, God will give you grace. Even in the frustrations, even in the anger, even in the, uh, the ways that things aren't working the way you want to in life, God will give you grace. That even as we say goodbye to people who are so meaningful and so important to us, God will give us grace. May you know that hope today. Whether it comes in the form of a, a surprising sunrise or a, a dilly bar. May you know the promise that God will give you and grant you the grace you need in this day. Amen and amen. Let us pray. God, you who answer us out of the depths, you who give us in the midst of our pain in which our motivation seems gone exactly what we need, help us now as we wait and we wait 
and we wait and we think that nothing is going to happen, that the light will never rise, help us to remember that we will not be engulfed in darkness forever, that you and your grace and your steadfast love will explode from beyond our imagining. Thank you for showing us the light. Today, may we be enlightened, Lord. May our face be lightened by your sunshine of grace. And we, may we know the love of our Creator in deep and profound ways. In your name we pray. Amen.